with its roots in the uprising of November 1830 and encouraged by events elsewhere in Europe, including the success of the Italian independence movement and take advantage of a Russia weakened by the Crimean War and the reforms introduced by Tsar Alexander II, the uprising of January 1863 was the longest lasting in post-partition Poland. Although it was ultimately unsuccessful and Russian reprisals were swift and ruthless, its engagement of all levels of society went on to have a decisive influence on the subsequent development of Polish society. This is the story of that uprising. Welcome to another edition of Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. Today we're going to discuss the uprising of January 1863, one of the great uprisings in Polish history. And I'm joined again in the studio by our expert, Dominik Szczęśty Kostanetsky. Dominik, thank you for joining us again. My pleasure. Lovely to see you. The 1863 uprising was a, a great uprising because it, I think it's, we should put it in context. And the, and, and the, the background to it was, was beginning probably a continuation in some ways of the feelings which had led to the November 1830 um, uprising. Mm, exactly. Uh, the feeling, the ideas, uh, the reasons themselves were the same, but there were also uh, alterations uh, to that. Um, uh, we talked, as you remember uh, perfectly, um, uh, about the November uh, uprising that uh, very little was made to help the peasants. The January uprising was quite different. The first thing that the so-called national government of the January uprising did was to give land unconditionally to the peasants and to threaten those who would oppose it uh, by, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, shooting them um, uh, at place. Um, so this is completely different. This, 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 one, th this one thing is completely, I mean, makes it completely different. But there are also other uh, differences. So, yeah, so, so this one, you, you, this revolution, or rebellion rather, or uprising, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. it, had a much wider social dimension, I think, than the, it would be fair to say, than the 1830 uprising. We often say that uh, there is a series, series of battles of, or uh, duels between um, the Polish uh, noblemen, noblemen and the Tsar, who would win the love, the opinion of the Polish peasant. And that very battle during the uh, January uprising was lost to, to but, Poland. But in 1920, when the Bolshevik army stood 10 kilometers away from Warsaw, but many social reforms were you know, advancing, the Polish prime minister was uh, the leader of uh, a, a peasant party. Uh, the, generally, I'm not talking about exceptions, but generally the Polish peasants felt Polish, not, they didn't join the Bolshevik ranks. So this, this battle was lost, but the crucial one that uh, was decisive for the fate of Poland in, uh, in the 20th century, I mean, uh, between 1918 and 1939, was won by the Polish, um, let's say, case, like the Polish uh, noblemen, the Polish uh, higher that, strata. That, yeah, yeah, so that's a very long process from this initial, mm -hmm. this initial. But I mean, when would you say the, I mean, the sort of events leading up to the 1863 
um, uh, uprising began. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say, and, and you're, you're, the, you're the historian, so you can obviously argue with me, but I would say you might... I wouldn't you, dare. No, no, no. But I, <laughs> I would say, you, you, I mean, in, in, in a funny sort of way, one could, one could probably go back to the Crimean War. Crimean when, War. When, 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 of course, the, the, the French and the British were fighting, were fighting the Russians and sort of for these romantic Poles, um, particularly the emigre population, the idea that somebody might be fighting the Russians was probably a jolly good thing. And of course, I think I'm right in saying that Mitskevich actually dashed off to Constantinople with the hope of, uh, uh, of, raising, of raising sort of some, some anti-Russian forces, only to get struck down by cholera, which in itself, I think, in a funny sort of way, <laughs> not wishing to upset anybody, <laughs> it, it, it encapsulates this Polish romantic idea. Let's go and fight the Russians. Let's dash off to Constantinople. Oh dear, I've died of cholera. Uh, which sort of, but the, the same happened to the great Duke Constantine, who wanted to fight the Polish, but he died of cholera. But it's the idea, but it's the idea I think, of this exile, as uh -huh. we discussed on a previous occasion, that Mitskevich living in Paris, sort of, the, here's this great mm -hmm. chance to do something for Poland, and it sort of in a funny water way, it sums up the sort of the great romantic thrust and at the same time the disappointment that he should, that, that he should uh, get to Constantinople and then die. I shared this, this, this opinion, that is to say, um, uh, uh, I mean, um, if you were to, um, uh, uh, you know, um, put it and classify it nicely, that the Crimean War was the spark uh, here, uh, in terms of um, um, general politics and the general situation in Europe. And um, the fact that the Russians uh, didn't do very well in that, in that war. Uh, exactly. in, 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 in fact, they lost the war um, and uh, the, the war um, showed uh, all the um, uh, you know, uh, bad I would say um, facts or bad uh, stuff about the the, 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 the the type of government that Russia had. It's backwardness. Backwardness. Yes. I think that's the best word. It's Russia. Russia's backwardness. And the Tsar. I mean, the Tsar himself died um, during that war in 1855. Some say that somebody helped him to move to the other world, but uh, we don't know exactly. But the, 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 it remains. It remains to be uh, to be stated that uh, that he died in 1855, and another Tsar, his son Alexander II. It's uh, he's uh, more, let's say. Uh, willing to reform Russia, yeah, so to make it more Western. And I think in the immediate aftermath of the Crimean War, the Russian Alexander II did lead some, some sort of reforms because the net result was because he brought the war to an end and, and, and sort of gave up. In 1856, the in, same... in, 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 the, in the peace conference, of course, the Polish question was not raised. So that was actually one, well, you know, a quite a, 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 no doubt a disappointment for Poles, but also from the, from the Russian point of view, probably a good idea or, or rather a relief that the Polish question had not sort of, at that point, acquired much international support. Because Russia lost the war, but she didn't lost it that much. No. And that's why, that's a very good point. So the reforms uh, uh, were, uh, were limited, and of course, um, you know, for the good of the people, it was something, because, no, they, they um, reform of 1861, so the social uh, economic reform that gave freedom uh, to, uh, let's say, 20, if my memory serves me collect, uh, correctly, 22 million uh, Russian peasants. Uh, I mean, this reform wasn't uh, enacted in, the, in, in Poland, in, in Congress Kingdom. We will come to, the, to that later. So it's... Uh, it was uh, contained only to um, Greater Russia, but it took place. So uh, the idea was that the uh, Russian peasants uh, should receive the land they were you know, cultivating after a certain period of time, after having paid the money that was due to their uh, owners. And uh, in theory, it uh, would last 50, 60 years. And that's also very interesting because you've got the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917, just yes. before, just before the peasants got their land on their own, just before. So what that's if, yes. what would have happened if they lived up 
to that point? Well, I think probably the, the revolution <laughs> itself. That Democratic much... Russia. I mean, it's yeah. hard to hard to uh, you know imagine, but uh, it is interesting.